Uh, I am Björn Klem, CEO of Audutech Pharma, uh, spin out from University of Oslo. And the topic today is, as you can see, antibiotic resistance. Um, this has been, uh, everybody knows about it, everybody heard about, has heard about it, but it's called a silent pandemic because it's getting in the shadow of the more famous uh, other pandemic. But I think in the Nordics, we had an experience from from uh, war victims uh, in, in certain parts of, the, of, the, of Europe that really scared us. We see that in our part of the world, this is also, also a serious problem. Uh, and uh, we need to do something about it. It takes 15 years to develop new drugs to combat this, uh, this situation. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so what is Agitech going to do about this problem? Bacteria defend themselves by producing enzymes that destroy antibiotics. Uh, one way of dealing with it is to add products that take out these enzymes, making antibiotics work again. And that's exactly what we're doing. So it's a com combination drug. You take a generic drug on the market, typically a broad-spectrum carbapenem, and you add these enzyme inhibitors, and you have a, a pretty good solution. And I'll show you how it looks like. Um, first, I'll just mention that there are two types of enzyme families, uh, serine beta-lactamases and metallobeta-lactamases. So the most prevalent SBLs are in, in the U.S. are sort of dealt with. There, are, there were a lot of funding being poured into that area, and there are drugs on the market uh, for a few years that will take care of this. However, the metallobeta-lactamases, those enzymes have been neglected. Uh, they origin from Asia, but are not now today all over the world globe, particularly also in uh, Southeast Europe, uh, as well as Asia, but also spreading heavily into the U.S. market. Um, there is a great attraction for these products. This technology is well known. It, it's known that it works. Big pharma companies has reduced their investments in uh, R&D development. So they're looking for projects like the ones we are uh, doing. And there are some great attraction to this. Both Pfizer and Shionogi recently bought and acquired companies working with very similar technologies in this area. They need to protect, protect their assets. And they see resistance building up towards the, the drugs. And also, it's, I think it's quite uh, uh, nice to them to have also patent extension to their products in the market. So there's a great attractiveness to such uh, technology. Now look at this. Um, you can always kill a, a bug, even a multi-resistant bug, with uh, large uh, doses of meropenem or any, any antibiotic. But here, like 500 milligrams per mil, uh, it would cause so much toxicity in the patient that patient probably would die too. So you, you just can't use it. You have to be below, in this case, eight microgram per mil. Um, so what you do, you combine it with APC-148, which is our lead product, and you can see suddenly this bacteria is sensitive to a dose of meropenem or two microgram per mil. Voila, you're there. This drug can be used again. Uh, we have also combined with other uh, antibiotics, and these are two uh, products on the market. Uh, the Ceftacidim avibactab is the leading Pfizer product. Uh, and typically, you can see some of these bacteria, they produce both MBL and SBL enzymes, which is quite critical. Uh, none of the products on the market will actually take out this bacteria. However, if you combine it with APC-148, you can see that you lower the dose dramatically. That means the sensitivity of that bacteria to those drugs. So keflosporins, carbapenems, any beta-lactams you like to see. So this is very promising results because we know it works. We are, we are in the preclinical stage, but we only know the need to show that it works in the lab with these bacteria. So we've been doing the regulatory pathway with the FDA. We have priority review uh, received from them. We had talked to EMA. We went to MPA uh, in Uppsala in June and planned for a phase one uh, that to be, uh, to be uh, performed in, in, the, in Uppsala as well. And this is our timeline. At the moment, we need to fund that phase one study. It's a large program of about 150 healthy volunteers. 
it will take, cost us about uh, 20 million US dollars. And we see that in the present capital market, that might be hard to achieve uh, today. So that we need a small part, uh, let's say $5 million now to get started on the journey. Um, typically, these are products, these are combination products with SPL in inhibitors. And this is typically what they sell for. This is a forecast. Uh, and we believe that it's a pretty good benchmark. It's a conservative one because we, we are going to do better than this. So, but you can see, you can see the, the, the predicted revenues here. Um, you also have competitors in this space. However, as I mentioned, Big Pharma has uh, reduced their investments. So you'll find 80% of these pro projects within academia and biotechs. And you will also see that only very few of them are dealing with these MBL enzymes. So we have a small and lean team with a lot of competence between the four of us, except for our PhD student. Uh, we have been doing global clinical trials we, uh, worldwide in international pharma and Norwegian biotechs. Uh, we cover IP, preclinical, clinical, regulatory very well. But we do have some gaps, and we are filling them in very nicely with this fantastic advisory team. You will find uh, people here from in toxicology, microbiology, clinical microbiology, uh, business development, and regulatory. And I'd like to especially mention David Finley, former head of GSK Antibiotics. A very good man to have. Our business model would be to get a deal at end of phase one, two with such a company. So to have a man like that on board, to understand what they are looking for is, of course, of great value to us. Uh, we have also a great uh, uh, team, board of director team, uh, with investors, people from experience with from manufacturing, and also our last person on the, on the board, Tom Berkin, located in Malmö, is a very important man for us, as he has been doing deals through larger companies like Amgen and Takeda. So uh, obviously this field is, uh, there's an opportunity here to, to apply for non-dilutive funding. And we are in the process, uh, we have several applications nationally and in the European Union. And uh, you may know a program called EIC Accelerator. Uh, there is a grant there with the 2.5 million euro and uh, uh, equity of uh, up to 15 million uh, euro. Uh, we had a very first, a very positive first stage one evaluation, as you can see, and we are, have great belief that this will be successful by the end of the year. Uh, so, as a summary, we can see that we can restore sensitivity um, to, of the bacteria to, uh, to mar meropenem or broad spectrum antibiotics. We know it works. Uh, we, it's safe. We are phase one ready gets to get started early next year. We have a clear regulatory pathway moving forward, and we have also identified uh, great attraction among um, big pharma companies to acquire such technology. So with these words, thank you for your attention, and uh, if you are in Oslo, drop by. Thank you so much, Bjorn. Like you said, this is a very hot topic at the moment. So a natural question is, how much interest have you seen in your technology already? Uh, we are in discussion with uh, several of these uh, companies and investors already. And uh, as, as you all know, they would like to follow the project for a while before any deal is being made. So we are quite hopeful that, as I mentioned, at the end of phase one, two, we will have a good or a fair chance of, of reaching such a deal. You were talking a little bit about patent extent, extent, uh, extensions. Can you extend a little bit upon what you meant by that? Um, yeah. Well, um, this technology can be combined with uh, existing products on the market. I mean, we are developing our own antibiotic, our own combination, if you like. Uh, Pfizer has its own product. It's facing a resistance. Uh, there is a patent going expiring uh, in the near term, term future. So combining their, t their products with our technology would obviously give them uh, a longer patent protection. Uh, sort of a life cycle management, if you like. 
All right. And uh, so that was for the MBL part of things. You also talked about the uh, SBLs uh, enzyme. Could you make a, a combined product that cures it all? Yes, <laughs> Fixes yes. all of the problems? <laughs> uh, hopefully. Um, I didn't uh, probably, I didn't uh, mention that uh, well enough. But th this is exactly what we do. We take our MBL inhibitor and we combine it with generic SBL inhibitors. And that is actually making us having a broad spectrum inhib inhibition product, which will be better than anything on the market today. Uh, obviously, there are some competitors that are trying to do the same, but I think their approach, making a wonder molecule, one molecule does it all, isn't really working well. So our approach to taking two into the mix could be better. So, But yes, that's the idea. All right, wonderful. And uh, speaking of competition, what makes your product uh, better than the others? Um, well, at the moment, uh, as I mentioned, there are no products on the market that can deal with these M MBL enzymes. Um, so, in the sense it stays that way, it, we, it will definitely be a better product. Uh, obviously, we have to. There will be competitors out there eventually, most likely. But uh, as we see it, it's going to be one of the first on the market with those uh, characteristics. All right, and uh, we touched earlier upon uh, there being a possibility for an early out licensing um, in a previous uh, yeah, previous presentation here, uh, and it seems like you're in the same situation. Uh, why, why is that? Well, I think as you saw on one of my slides here, there ha there are big pharma companies out there that are looking for such technology. Uh, typically, when they acquire companies, they do that in, uh, in phase one uh, uh, companies. They're into phase one, maybe early phase two. Um, and so we believe that our technology being quite similar to a couple of these you saw on the, on the slide there uh, would make that quite possible. And we also see what we do is we look for uh, big companies or companies with uh, great products out there that are sort of standalone antibiotics. They don't have this protection. So GSK just bought a new uh, carbapenem product. It's great for them, but it, it doesn't have any protection. So, so my feeling is in you know, a short time, they will be looking for technology to protect that asset because in the long term, it's going to acquire a resistance with that product and they need to sort of protect it. And a final question from my side, the discussions that you're having, is there something specific that they want to see or that they do not want to see in your product, uh, project going forward? Well, well, obviously, they have seen a bit of our, the efficacy with this product already, uh, which is encouraging. But most of these projects terminate because of safety issues. So obviously, the phase one slash two program would be uh, a game changer. You know, it will decide everything on, on, on such a deal being made. So we will uh, keep uh, a keen eye on, on uh, the development going forward. Then. Yeah, you keep them, uh, keep <laughs> them informed, you know, with, the, <laughs> your, with your channels and uh, they will know when we're there. <laughs>